Okay, in this video we'll test the control matrix for the JM transistor processor. This is a, a relatively complex board, but it's fairly easy to test. It's just a lot of test steps. Um, so fundamentally, it consists of a instruction register, which is 8 bits. The high 4 bits are for the opcode, and the lower 4 bits are for the argument, which can be something like the um, address to fetch data from or something like that. Essentially the way it's tested is to latch values into the instruction register and then to make sure that the correct um, instruction has been decoded. And then as we cycle through the various phases we have to make sure that for a given instruction the correct uh, sequence of control lines are toggled. So the first thing I've done here is to attach the relevant control lines uh, so we need all the phases for the uh, control matrix connected. So we've got one jumper going to each, and I've got it currently configured to uh, a value of 1, so that's just P1 is high, all the rest are low. We need the latch instruction control line, and we need the enable um, instruction control line. Of course we have the data lines as well, and I've got them set so that uh, just the upper bits are set to zero and the rest are floating as ever. Don't connect anything directly to 5 volts or you will damage the board. I also have the clock line uh, connected. We need the clock line going into this board otherwise we can't latch data into the instruction register. And of course we have the clear uh, line connected to um, high. We need to be able to clear the register when we first power up the board. So assuming you've got these jumpers connected, clear the um, register, just quickly connect clear to ground, that will clear everything, and in this state you should have the LDA um, LED illuminated and then just the LM and EP lights illuminated. Now in the instructions there is a table that shows uh, for a given opcode which LED instruction LED should be illuminated. So there's these red LEDs uh, across the center. So at the moment we have an opcode of 0000, set, which you can see in the green LEDs on the left, and that gives us LDA, and then we'll come back to looking at the control lines in a, a little while once we've tested the instructions. So LDA looks fine. Let's now Test the next one, which is add. So we need an opcode of 0001. So the upper four bits of the address that is latched into the instruction register constitute the opcode. So what we need is to set those to 0001. So don't connect it to the plus 5 volts, remember, just have it floating. It's in a two step process to latch it into the instruction register because we don't have the clock connected, the clock's generated on the clock board which isn't plugged in. So we need to take the latch instruction control line to ground, that will enable the latch clock for the instruction register and then we cycle the control line, sorry the uh, clock line and then we put the latch instruction back high. So we've now latched the four upper bits of the data bus into the opcode part of the instruction register. You see that we've also latched in the arguments but uh, we're not using that here. This data normally comes from the, the ROM at the start of each instruction. So the, the first stage in any instruction is to fetch these eight bits from the current uh, ROM address uh, and that constitutes the, the instruction to be carried out along with any argument that is supplied with the instruction. So I've set 0001, and you can see that indeed we have 0001 in the upcode. If we look at the table, that should give us the instruction add, and it does. We've got add illuminated. We'll try one more. So the next one is 0010, so we'll set that in the jumpers. Again, these are the upper four bits of the data bus, latch it in, take match instruction low, cycle the 
clock line, the latch instructions back high, and you can see we've now latched in 0010 as an opcode. That should give us the instruction sub, and indeed it does. So to test the board, you just go through all the rest of the opcode values, latch those into the instruction register, and then make sure that the correct instruction is decoded. And that tests that the decoder is uh, working correctly, and we can successfully decode any opcode that is latched into the instruction register. The lower four bits of the instruction register, you can test in a similar way just set different values on the lower four bits of the data bus, go through the latching process and make sure that the correct value appears in the argument bits of the instruction register. Okay, so that's the instruction register and the decoder tested. The next bit is to, con is to test the control matrix, which is a bit more complicated. It's not difficult, it's just time consuming. Um, what you have to do is Again, look at the table that's supplied in the instructions. It's quite a, an involved table, but it's probably fairly obvious how it works. What you do is you latch into the instruction register the opcode that you want to test, and then you cycle through all five phases and make sure that the correct LEDs are on. I'll do the first two lines, but uh, you get the idea I want to bore you by going through the whole thing. So firstly, we need to latch in the correct instruction. So in this case, I'll, I'll look at the LDA instruction. And if we look at LDA, that is all zeros. So we'll latch that into the instruction register. So we now have that latched in. So we can see the opcode is all zeros and we have the LDA LED illuminated. Now if we look back at the table with phase one, there are no phase lights on this board. The phase lights are on the clock board, but we're going to look at the jumpers um, that I have set, and I've got them set to um, just phase one is high and the rest are low. So that's phase one of the instruction cycle. And with phase one, that should give us EP on and LM on, and all the rest should be off. And indeed, we have LM and EP on. If we go to phase two, which just means setting just P1 high, only one phase line should ever be high at once. All the rest uh, should be low. So if we now look at phase two, which I've got set, we should have CP on, which we do, and we should also have CE and LI, CE and LI, so they're on as well. And all you do is you go through each phase of the instruction cycle for each opcode. Uh, it doesn't take that long, but it is a bit, um, a bit tedious. And as long as you get all the um, correct LED indications, then you know the board is working fine and uh, there aren't any problems. As ever, if you do find any problems, you need to sort those out before you move on. Um, this is uh, really the heart of the processor. So if you get this working, then the rest of it is fairly straightforward. It's just uh, a case of making uh, sure that various registers and latches work. But this is the most complex part of the machine, so it's, it is worth spending time making sure this works correctly. In the next video, we'll have a quick look at running the two boards we've constructed so far. Uh, we don't need all four boards to make the processor actually do something, uh, and we'll look at that in the next video.